What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the dark side of the forest with your girl, Lunatic Froggy. Today, we're going to be talking about a cereal on a liver. Now, he has two bodies on him, and as we all know that they don't consider a cereal on a liver with, under, with only two, okay? It's like five. But there's a reason that they consider him a serial on a library. He is also a grave robber. So let's get into this. Warning, the video you're about to watch contains adult material. It contains essay, gruesome violence, forms of animal, Cruelty, human cruelty, grave robbing, brainwashing, manipulation, grooming, and a bunch of other things. Watch at your own discretion. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Ed Jean and Augusta Jean. Okay, in order to talk about Ed Jean, you have to talk about the things that Augusta did. Now, Augusta was 22 when she married her husband, George, in 1900. She was 22 years old. When she ended up marrying her husband, George, they ended up having a child named Henry in 1902. After she had Henry, she started really hating men. Like, she didn't want nothing to do with these men. She hated men. But, because of her face, old Lutheran, she refused to divorce her husband. She also believed that everybody was sinners and they all were going to hell to burn she believed that any type of self-enjoyment was a sin women were a sin men were a sin and she taught her children this okay she would gospel to the children constantly to the point it became a daily thing where she was constantly telling them that this is a sin and that's a sin and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and God will provide for you if you do everything right and well A how is everybody going to hell if they're all sinners but yet you're gospeling about God I don't know but after henry she really really started despising men by the time 2006 or not 2006 1906 came along she loathed her husband and i think a lot of that had to do with again at that point in time Consent was not a thing. There was no consent in that form. Um, her husband was a heavy drunk and could not keep a job. He would constantly drink. He would lose jobs after jobs after jobs. Now, they did have a grocery store that Augusta would run. And... she was getting more and more and more annoyed with her husband because he couldn't keep a job she's running the grocery store she's got a little one at home she does everything at home and he's a constant drunk well in 1906 she ended up getting pregnant and augusta really wanted a female like really wanted a daughter 100 percent, but they ended up having 
Ed. So she got very like possessive and she determined that she was not going to have children, male children that to grow up like all of these other men, the ones that she loathes and hates. So they end up moving to a farm. When they moved to this farm, she took full advantage of it because it's on 163 acres. And like literally the town had a schoolhouse with 12, 12 children. And that's literally all of their school years. It's only had 12 children. So it's a very small town. So Augusta took great advantage of this. She's like, yeah, no, you're not going to go out there and socialize. You're not going to leave this farm. No, you're going to stay here. And if they would socialize with the children at school, because they were allowed to leave the farm to go to school. That's the only time they were allowed to leave the farm. So if they went to school and they're like, yo, um, mom, I made a friend. Mom was like, yeah, no, you didn't, and would punish the boys for socializing. So, now, like, Ed, he had a laceration on his tongue, which really caused it so he could not speak. And Henry, Henry you know, he was a couple years younger, but, or, or older, so he was almost graduating. So kids would bully Ed and when Ed would come home crying because he was getting bullied, picked on, and isolated, like they literally banished him. They're like, yeah, no, you're not hanging out with us. He, so he would come home crying. His dad would beat him because again, his dad's an alcoholic. So he's literally getting beat for not socializing and getting beat for socializing. Now, at the very young age of 12, Ed had two things happen to him. He witnessed his mom butchering a pig. And he got aroused and finished watching his mom butcher this pig. Later on in the year, he ended up getting caught self-pleasuring himself. And she grabbed his manhood and said this is the curse of the m of men and she would hone like hone in on that all year about how self-pleasuring is a sin and communication with girls is a sin and girls were a sin and boys who did things with females was a sin and like she would make her kids fear they were going to burn in hell for touching a woman which is kind of ironic when we get into the later parts of this so ed stopped doing any of that any of that like he was mommy's boy 100 percent. shortly after he this happened in 1918 at the age of 16 he dropped out of school he's like no i don't no it was in 1918, that's when he got caught pleasuring himself. So, 
it's 1922 he drops out of school now i remind you he's 16 years old so he does a lot of the farm labor and he babysits for the neighbor well in 1940 his dad passed george passed away when george passed away it left Ed, Henry, and Augusta. So the boys have to go out and they have to make money to provide for the house. They have to hunt to provide for the house. They got to get hay and all this other stuff. And Henry started seeing a divorced single mom of two kids. Now, if you paid attention, old Lutherans, not nah, not nah, you don't divorce. That's naughty. Being a single mother of two kids is naughty. Literally, they were brought up against everything Henry was doing. And Henry started talking bad about Augusta to Ed. He's like, man, my Ma mom's full of shit. And the reason he started doing this is because Ed had such an attachment to his mother that Henry was worried because, of course, he's planning on moving out and moving in with his girlfriend who has two kids so he's talking bad about augusta to ed ed's not appreciating it at all he's like yeah no this shit ain't cool he gets so mad and so hurt over the simple fact that his brother was talking so much rubbish about his mother because ed hunt handle it and in 1944 ed's brother henry was burning the marsh and that's mainly to get like rid of mosquitoes and bugs and ticks and get the fields all ready for the next year so as he's burning the marsh it starts to go up out of control and the fire department has to come well by that night they ended up getting the fire controlled like put out but henry wasn't anywhere near so ed went and reported him as missing within the following couple of days they ended up finding henry laying face first in the dirt and at first they're like oh it's heart disease because george died of a heart heart attack so they're like it's heart failure well then they went back and looked at it and it wasn't heart failure he had bruises all over his face he wasn't burnt anywhere. Now, mind you, he di supposedly died in a fire. So they're like, oh, well, you know, heart failure from the fire. Well, on the coroner's report, they said it was a the asphyxiation from inhaling smoke. And... The police later th believed that it was Ed that went after Henry for talking bad about Augusta. Within two years of Henry passing away, Augusta started, like, she had a stroke, but it wasn't, like, a major stroke. It was a Tia which is a mini stroke 
So she starts, you know, she's doing okay. She's steady. Augusta and Ed walk to Mr. Smith's house to get some hay. As they're walking up to Mr. Smith's house, they witnessed Mr. Smith beat a dog on a live. Like, he on a live that dog. But they weren't upset about that. They weren't upset that he on a live this dog. What they were upset with was Mr. Smith had a woman who was not his wife in the house. So, Augusta went around saying that she was Mr. Smith's uh, harlot. She was Mr. Smith's home wrecker. And she was also mad about the fact that Mr. Smith had somebody who wasn't his wife in the house. Now, could it have been a daughter? Yes, it very well could have been. But. It could have even been a nanny if he had younger children. It, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons why there was another woman in the house when Mr. Smith was there. But Miss Augusta, Jean over here, was like, yeah, no, that's his harlot. That's his homework record. That's his troll up and... Shortly after that, she ended up having another major stroke. And within six months of the stroke, she ended up passing away. And this is where we get into Ed. We had to discuss all of this background just so that way you guys could really understand where he was coming to with the attraction and the... um mind control that his mother put on him like literally she was a helicopter parent to a t and when she passed away ed couldn't handle it he vowed to bring her back he vowed that he was gonna make it right she would live again well he started robbing graves to make a suit of like his mother he wanted to be able to crawl into this suit to bring his mother back well apparently he ran out of fresh graves because on may 16th of 19 1957 he ended up going to a hardware store in his town to pick up some antifreeze now how did they know that he went and picked up this antifreeze it was a paper receipt anyways He was the last person to purchase something from this hardware store. So when the son came to get his elderly mother, Bernice, from the hardware store, she, he found the cash register, cash register open, money gone, and blood all around the hardware store where the cash register was and he called the police and they investigated it well when the police went to mr ed's house they reported that it was one of the most horrific scenes that they have ever seen okay so he they arrested ed at a grocery store because he was grocery shopping they arrested him sent him to like 
jail interview do the interrogation type stuff while he was in an interrogation and at the jail the sh the sheriff's department went to mr ed's house homie had a lot of explaining to do because they found bernice hanging up in the barn like you would hang a pig to gut them. As a matter of fact, she was gutted. And when they went into the house, they found whole human bones and fragments, a wastebasket made of skin, human skin covering several chairs, skulls on his bedpost it's reported most of them were female female skulls some with the top sawed off so it was like a tray um bowls made from human skulls a corset made from a female torso skin from shoulders to waist links made legging or not linked leggings made from human skin masks made from human skin of female heads um mary hoggins face in a paper bag mary hoggins skull in a box so remind you bernice is in the barn and we'll get into this mary hoggins in a second we're just going to run through some of the things that they seen in the house um they found bernice's entire head in a burlock sack they found her heart in a plastic bag in front of mr ed's stove like he was it looked like he was about to eat it um nine vulva in a shoe box now if you don't know what a vulva is look it up it's nothing bad a vulva is like the thing in the back of your tongue that hangs down um a young girl's dress and the vulvas of two females judged to be about 15 years old four noses, a pair of lips on a window shade, a lampshade made from the skin of a human face, and fingernails from females. Okay, so here's where Mr. Ed comes to admit the things that he did. Uh, Gene admitted to stealing from nine graves and led investigators to their locations um like he would get in there and like so you know how a grave ain't fully packed in until like a couple of days right after they would leave the service he would go in there and dig up the soil and pull the bodies out so they put it and they asked for permission to dig up the graves of the seven graves that he admitted to and it was exactly what um he explained and the bodies were missing um he stole all of their profession uh jewelry and possessions um but it is said that soon after his mother's death G ed began to create a woman's suit so that he he could become his mother to literally crawl in her skin uh he said he didn't have uh, ickies with them because they smelled too bad that's the only reason he didn't penetrate them um 
Jean also admitted to shooting 51-year-old Mary Hogan at a tavern, or she was a tavern owner who's been missing since December 8th, 1954, um, which, once again, they found it, her in the uh, house. But later he denied it because he don't remember the deal, like the information of her death, the details of her death. Um, one of the 16 year old youths whose parents were friends with Mr. Jean and who attended baseball games and movies with him reported that Jean kept shrunken heads in the house which he had described to the police these were determined to be true human human facial skins carefully peeled from corpses and used by mr ed as a mask um so here's where we get into one of the technicalities with ed's case they could not take his admission into court. The reason that they couldn't take his admission into court is because of the simple fact a police officer repetitively beat his head against a brick wall and within a year of the trial starting, he and well, a year before the trial started, I should say, he ended up dying of a heart attack. He suffered PTSD from going in this house. Because you got to think that, like, that is horrible. So he was only tried with the two counts. Now, why is he considered a serial killer? And the reason that they consider him a serial killer is because Ed has some secrets that he took to the grave with him. Now, remind you, Ed is dead. Augusta is dead. Henry is dead. And George is dead. Okay. Ed died in a mental institution in Minnesota. But in addition to the murders of Mary and Bernice. Yeah, Bernice. He was, Ed was also considered a suspect of several other cult unsolved cases all around his house. Yeah, all around his house. So they had Georgia, Jean Reckler, who was like literally eight years old, who disappeared near the farm home in front of her home checking the mail now it is said that she, she was dropped off by a neighbor and like she dropped them dropped her off at the edge of the lane and watched her go to the mailbox pick up the mail like a big stack of mail and carry it into the house or walk towards the house and then she disappeared but she reported seeing a 1936 Ford sedan with a gray plastic spotlight in the, um, you know, like when you're shining things. And guess who also owned one of those with the spotlight? Mr. Ed Jean. Okay. He was also uh, suspected in taking Evelyn Grace, who was 15, who went missing while babysitting a 20-month-year-old girl at the home of La Crosse State College professor. Um, that evening, her father, Richard, called the home and she didn't check in which is this is the most important thing when you 
let your children go babysit is have them check in very important um when they moved in or when they went in to go look for her the all of the furniture had been removed like rearranged and her books were like kind of scattered but not fully scattered and she had two her shoes were in separate rooms kind of like she was running and hiding so he is suspected of taking evelyn he is also suspected of the missing of victor who was 43. uh he went off to go hunt deer and he never came back um which if you're a professional which if you're a deer hunter you know once again check in on homies when they're out there doing their thing and then he was also reported to have um be involved in the abduction and making um people uh he had a neighbor named james who disappeared uh edward performed chores for her and was like always over there helping her after james went missing um he says he didn't do it he did take like two lie detectors tests but if you're a sociopath you're easily gonna like uh pass it so he ends up getting trialed now what happened to the house um jean's house and the 195 not 96 of acres was appraised at four thousand seven hundred dollars back in literally 1958 which would be the equivalent of about fifty thousand dollars in 2023 god knows in 2024 that'd be a lot higher um So, it was rumored that the house on the land it stood on might become a tourist attraction early on the morning of March 20th. The house was destroyed by fire. A deputy fire marshal reported that the garage fire, or the garbage fire, had been set 75 feet from the house by a cleaning crew who was given the test to dispose of uh the house basically all the garbage and stuff in the house um so yeah they ended up burning the house down to the ground um so it also says that there might have been arson there too but basically mr ed here became a sociopath because of his mother now a lot of people say that helicopter parents, you know, those mothers that are like up on their children, well, at least they're protecting their children. What you're doing when you're a helicopter parent and not letting them learn and grow for social, at, like, so, to learn social cues. Now, that's not saying everybody, because we all know our autistic people 
some of them have a hard time understanding social cues. That is totally fine. But when you don't allow your child to fail and succeed on their own merit, you are conti- you are causing the child to not fully comprehend right from wrong. True, true, sorry. So, let me know what you think down below. Um, I love y'all and I hope you have a great day. Love y'all. Bye.